Are there some tried and true methods to play faster? There are some. Let's get to them. So thanks for checking out this video today. Today what I'm going to discuss is how to become more comfortable playing faster lines, faster licks, things like that in a comfortable fashion. And I'm going to break it up into two sections, the picking hand and then the fretting hand. Both are equally important and both have to be addressed if you're going to do it comfortably and competently. Later in the video I will discuss some picking patterns that I used that were extremely helpful to me in speeding up the process of getting my right left hand synchronization down. So that will be covered after we do the right and left hand techniques that you need to work on first. So one thing I want to address right up front and that is sort of the philosophy of playing faster because you see a ton of videos online discussing this subject matter and everybody has different approaches but these are the approaches that have worked for me, especially recently. They've really helped because I got very serious about it. It wasn't an extreme amount of practice that I had to put in. It was the proper type of practice that paid off. Okay, first things first, let's talk about the picking hand. A big mistake that a lot of players make and I made for years was my approach to the strings. If you are comfortable floating above your guitar, and trying to pick that way with your wrist raised. It's one of those things where it can be done. And if you grew up playing that way, you might be the most efficient at playing that way. But what we're talking about here is something that I've worked on personally that has ironed out a lot of my problems because I had a weird approach to the guitar, okay? Initially, I actually held the pick this direction with the pick angled up towards the roof. Now I, I hold the pick with a straight thumb and it's angled towards more towards the floor. In any case, uh, I want you to get as much of your arm, wrist, and hand in contact with the guitar. So in other words, up here on the body of the guitar and then putting your wrist down all the way down on the strings even, okay? There's nothing wrong with being on top of the strings that you are not playing because at some point you are going to want to mute notes anyways. So if you have two separate techniques, in other words, you pick normally like this with a wrist up, and then you have to put the wrist down to palm mute, you're employing two techniques. And I would say just go straight for the, the technique where you're always down on the strings anyhow. Some of the greatest pickers that you'll look at are putting the most amount of arm, wrist, and hand into contact with the guitar. Think about people like uh, Guthrie Govan, Andy Wood, those pickers, they have their hands right down here on the strings. They're right there. They don't have to lift up much. They're always in contact with the guitar, okay? That setup for me has changed uh, a lot of how I pick and has made it much more comfortable too. Once you're down here on the strings, another thing to think about is the alignment of your hand to your arm. And what I mean by that is, if you set up, let's say you set up up here, and then you want to pick the first string. See the angle of my hand versus my arm? That's a harsh angle to start at, to start picking. So what I would encourage you to do is have your setup nice and straight. And then as you pick from the sixth through the first strings, you actually move your arm down the bridge. Now I'm touching right here on the bottom of my palm across the strings and you keep for the most part you're going to keep that wrist aligned with the arm that way as I'm picking I don't have much movement to make I'm not picking in a uh, weird fashion like before like I said like this with my starting with a crooked wrist I'm starting with a straight wrist on every single string that makes a big difference but for some reason, I was very hesitant about moving my 
and up and down. I thought it would be better to have an anchor point and then try to pick everything from that anchor point. That's a terrible idea. You really do need to have the ability to move up and down the bridge so that you can access every string with more or less the same picking angle, okay? So let's just see what that looks like. On the sixth string, I'm all the way down here. Then I go to the fifth string. Fourth string. And I end up with my hand pretty much in alignment with my arm, okay? So whether I'm here or here, I have to make that movement. Make the adjustment, it will keep your arm and wrist much more comfortable and get rid of a lot of that arm tension that you're feeling. Okay, let's talk about how you hold the pick. I tend to hold it with a trigger finger, as I like to call it, and then the flat thumb across it, and the tip sticks out past my index finger. Hopefully you can see that, all right? And it doesn't matter so much what you're doing with the, the remaining fingers, a lot of people will tuck them in, some will put them out and touch the guitar. The main thing is that they're not in the way, so whatever you're doing, keep them out of the way. You want to make sure that you are not gripping the pick with a grip of death. That is not going to help you get through the string quicker. It's actually going to cause the opposite. So if you are gripping it so hard that you hear this, you hear it snapping back like that, you've built up so much friction that it can't even get through the string. So think of it this way. You could hold the pick, and if you can have somebody else walk up and just take it right out of your hand like that, that's about right. Not so loose that it's going to just fall out of your hand, but so that somebody could take it out, okay? That's about where you want it. That does give a little bit of bend and flex, but if you're using a thick enough pick, the pick is going to be stiff enough to pop the string. We don't need to give it uh, a ridiculous amount of added tension by gripping it so much, okay? It's gonna cause the string to pop and it's going to cause all this tension in your arm. Let me see if I can demonstrate that. You can see when I put so much tension on the pick, it goes all the way up to my uh, elbow here. So that's not what we want. You want to be able to simply get through the string comfortably and it's still plenty loud. Okay, that's a very comfortable picking pattern and I don't have to uh, put any tension in that. Lastly, let's talk about the pick angle. You need to find what works well for your hand to get through the string while making a pure sounding note. Okay, you don't want to pick so harshly that it sounds bad, like that. And you don't want to pick so flat either that you're building up added friction by being parallel to the string, like that, okay? But there's an angle in there that's going to be comfortable with your setup where you can get through the string and it feels really nice and easy going. You're super relaxed through the entire process, okay? You need to do that on each and every string and see where you can pick quicker notes, not super slow, not like... You can pick that at any angle and almost make it sound good, okay? That's not what we're talking about. Something where you're picking quicker. Okay, find that and start employing that in your picking technique. Okay, let's talk about the fretting hand. And honestly, I'm gonna say a lot less about this than what I did with the picking hand because there was so much to cover over here that I felt was worth mentioning. But on the left hand, right away, I wanna mention that if you're gonna use all four fingers when you're playing something a little more intricate, make sure that you are lining up parallel to the side of the neck. You don't want to be reaching with your fingers like this. It just makes things a little harder to synchronize and to hit accurately especially if you're doing something that involves hammer-ons, pull-offs, that sort of thing. So just keep that in mind. It's okay to play sideways. And sideways, what I mean by that is my fingers are reaching. We all do that for certain passages. But I'm just talking about if you're playing something a little more intricate and you want to try to be a little more accurate with it, 
Think about lining up parallel to the neck like that. You can think of it as your knuckles lining up with the side of the guitar. So a lot has been said about you learn a passage, you turn on a metronome, and if you could play it cleanly to the metronome, you bump it up a couple beats and you rinse and repeat until you get up to your goal BPM. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just gonna show you another method that worked for me because I kept hitting walls with metronomes. And I'm sure a lot of you out there have experienced the same where you get to a certain point and for whatever reason you can't push through it. So this idea really helped me with that and it really helped me feel like I was more in control of what I was picking. So let's talk about the first pattern I wanna show you that you can work on. And that is on the fourth string, ninth fret, I'm gonna start there, and then I'm gonna to move to 10th fret, 12th fret, and then on the third string, nine, 11, and 12th. All right, that's the pattern we'll be using. And then I'll come back down that pattern. All right, now the concept I wanna talk about is walking and running. Doesn't that matter which one you do first, it just matters that you do both. So in this example, I will, let's see, I'll do the uh, running first and then I'll walk. And what I mean by that is you play part of the passage quicker than the rest of the passage. So here's what it looks like. So obviously I'm running up the passage and then coming down the passage much slower. That really helped me get in control of what I was playing and feel like I could control tempo so much better than just pushing myself with a metronome. I don't know the exact reason why, but you might want to give it a try. So let's look at some other passages. Take the same passage and then reverse it. And you'll notice I am playing on a clean setting and I don't always recommend that. I think it's totally fine to play on distorted tones and practice that way. But I do think it is worthwhile to at least know that everything you are picking is clean and that you're happy with it. We're all going to make mistakes, but a clean setting gives you the, the, uh, the best insight into what kind of mistake you might be making. So with that pattern, we basically taught ourselves one shape, one scale shape, going forwards and going backwards. But we need to teach our hands and our brains the other scale shapes. So. I'm gonna go down here on the E on the fourth string and basically just play each scale shape up the E minor scale until I complete it. And that will not only give me a lot of good practice on all these various phrases, it will also teach my brain how to process a lot of notes as one scale chunk. So I'm not individually thinking about every single note. So I will go through these fragments twice each and relatively slow so you can hear the notes and pick them up for yourselves. So obviously all those fragments that I just played through in the E minor scale, you'll want to move those to the other string sets and move it to different keys. Matter of fact, that's the best way to get any sort of pattern down is to move it through different keys. If you practice it in one location or in one key, you tend to learn position and you start thinking about the dots on your necks. But if you practice it in multiple keys, you tend to learn the, the pattern much better and faster. So hopefully working on those patterns like that will truly help you develop a nice,
control over your tempo and your ability to play something slowly and then immediately speed up and then slow down. That sort of thing is something that really lacked in my playing and it has really benefited from those exercises. So the walking and running exercises, along with all of the right hand techniques I talked about, definitely try those because they truly do pay off and they pay off much quicker than anything else I ever tried. So if there's anything out there that is the secret to picking, for me, it's been exactly what I just covered today. So you may have noticed that when I picked something slower, maybe my wrist wasn't lined up perfectly with my arm. And you may notice that in your own playing. However, there's nothing wrong with that. When we pick things very slowly, our technique tends to relax and we pick it differently anyhow. So that's why I really encourage the walking and running scenario because it gives you that chance to work on your technique while running. Learning to run by running, not necessarily just playing something over and over and over at a slow tempo, because we do tend to pick differently at slow tempos. Lastly, let me just say that what I covered in today's video has truly paid off the quickest for me personally. And if you try it and it works out for you and it helps you break through some of these walls, please leave me a comment and let me know how it goes or tag me on Instagram or something like that. I'd be curious as to how many people try this and they end up developing a more relaxed picking hand and their synchronization picks up because for me, it was a real game changer and it's made so much of what I play easier and more relaxed. I certainly hope you enjoyed the material today and if you liked it, please make sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover, please leave me a comment and let me know what you'd like to see next, and I'll see you all next time.